come to the main point, epidemiology. According to a nationwide community-based epidemiological study of snake bite and its socio-economic consequences in Bangladesh, the incidence density of snake bite in rural Bangladesh is 623.4 per 1 lakh person year or this is almost uh, 95 uh, uh, with an estimated of uh, 6041 deaths annually the majority of the bite are 71 uh, percent happened in the lower extremities 86 percent of the victims received some form of management within two hours of snake bite although only three percent of the victims went directly uh, to either a medical doctor or hospital. The majority of the snake bite victims are of young age. Biting happens mostly when the individuals are at work, outside, or within the home environment. Most often, the victims of snake bites are poor, young, and active individuals. Biting occurs mostly when individuals are at work, engaged in activities such as cultivation, fishing, plantation wood collection or uh, tending crops or uh, crops or uh, gardens snake bite in venom in bangladesh is thus an occupational hazard health hazard of the rural poor people who suffer bites while engaged in physical work most often during cultivation during the monsoon snake bite occurrence increases as snakes leave their shelter due to rainfall most of the houses in countryside of bangladesh are not brick built and the snakes sometimes live in the holes of the muddy floors. Moreover, most of the houses have homemade, uh, homestead bush, which offers an ideal habitat for snakes. As a result, events of snake bites are also common when people are at home. Due to its geographical location and climatic condition, Bangladesh is a disaster-prone country. Based on records of the surveillance system of DGHS, Bangladesh uh, snake bite in Venoming was identified as a leading cause of mortality in several flood disasters, second only to drowning. Clinical observations suggest increased number of snake bites admission in Chitong region after earthquakes and minor seismic activities. Identification of venomous snakes. This is very much important how we can identify the venomous snakes in Bangladesh, mainly three uh, common snake families we found here, family Elapidae, Viperidae, and Colubridae. Uh, in family Elapidae, we find cobra, crates, coral snakes, taipan, or tiger snakes. And Viperidae, most common, uh, most common in this region or in Silet region is green pit viper, and then in North Bengal, Russell's viper, South scale viper, puff adder. And, uh, family colubrity uh, includes uh, redneck killback and sometimes we also found in this region cat snakes. So how can we identify these uh, uh, snakes according to the family 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 Elapidae, they have they are relatively long and thin usually in a uniformly colored snake with large smooth symmetrical scale on the top of the head. Venom glands are situated behind the eye, surrounded by compressor muscles. Venom duct opens at the base of the fang. Venomous coral snakes have flattened paddle-like tail. Cobras raise the front part of the body of the ground and spread their hood. So uh, here we can see a picture that uh, the venom duct uh, just lies behind the fang and these are the compressor muscles. This is a uh, pic picture of uh, Elapidae family. These are the venom glands, and you see the fangs here. And the, this this one is also a fang. And some common find snakes here is common prey, banded prey, monosilate cobra, bisilate cobra, coral snake, and taipan. In Bangladesh, uh, bisilate cobra or in silate region, this is the uh, silate region. This is uh, most common monosilate cobra. I'm sorry. Family Viperidae or uh, Green Pit Viper, Russell's Viper, these two are most common. They are relatively short, thick bodied, short tailed snakes with many small rough scales on the top of the head. Characteristic, characteristic, patterns, characteristic patterns of colored markings on the head. Thanks. On a rotatable maxilla, making them erectile. 
Okay, these are the most common in uh, North Bengal. This is Russell's viper, and in this region, this is green peat viper. And family, these are uh, less common than the previous two, Elabridae or Viperidae, and redneck, we usually found here the redneck tailback, and this is venom secreted by supralabial gland tracts. Down groups in the posterior maxillary fangs, and these are the picture, the very beautiful red neck killback here, and also beautifully dangerous. So now come to the point differentiation between venomous and non-venomous. So how can we find these snakes are venomous or non-venomous? There's some points that uh, venomous snakes have. Sorry. Fangs, they have two fangs in upper jaw. Fangs are bigger than other teeth and grouped or canalized. And uh, non-venomous snakes usually doesn't have any fang. These uh, tooth uh, teeth are solid, not canalized or grooved. Several small teeth present. Uh, the venomous snakes have compressed or flat tail and uh, non-venomous is usually round tail. The scales on the ventricular surface is large and cover in entire breadth of the belly in venomous snakes and small and moderately large but do not cover in the entire breadth is non-venomous. The head scale, these are important. Head scales are uh, small in vipers, large in feet vipers, shield-like in cobra and coral snakes and large, usually large in non-venomous snakes. Scale is also to anal plate. These are single row and not in non-venomous snakes, these are double row. The most important point, uh, how can we differentiate the bite mark? The venomous snakes have two fang marks with or without small marks on uh, of other teeth. But uh, here the non-venomous snakes usually have number of small teeth marks in a row. Now, uh, what are the composition of snake venom? Mainly the snake venom is composed of mostly by protein, 90% per, uh, uh, of the snake venom uh, contains protein and uh, uh, less in next 10% contains non-protein non part. The protein part have enzymes, non-enzymatic polypeptide toxin and non-enzymatic polypeptide non-toxin. So most important part of the snake venom or which causes the um, pathogenesis here or other symptoms are the enzymes. Important engines are uh, digestive hydrolases, hyaluronidase, kinogenase, L-amino acid oxidase, phosphomono and diesterase, and phospholipase A2. And the non-protein part contains carbohydrate, lipid, free amino acid, nucleosides, biogenic amines uh, such as serotonin and acetylcholine. Uh, these are the uh, venom enzymes we would talk uh, i would go very uh, brief discussion just because whenever we will discuss the pathophysiology the venom enzymes will be discussed in broadly here the zinc metalloproteinase degrades the breast membrane components Next, the procoagulant enzymes uh, venoms of vaporidae elapidae colobridae contain serine protein and other pro procoagulant enzyme and they act like uh, they that are thrombin like or activate other factors like 5 or 10 prothrombin and other clotting factors. Russell Viper's venome activates factor 2, factor 5, 10, uh, 9, and 13 fibrinolysis protein C and other platelet agre uh, aggregation. Phospholipase A2 lecithinase, this is the most widespread and extensively studied of all venom enzymes. It usually damages mitochondria, RBC, peripheral nerve endings, leukocytes, skeletal muscles, vascular endothelium, uh, and other membrane. In other sense, it usually um, hampers or uh, affects the whole, uh, different systems there. Acetylcholinesterase may cause fasciculation, hyaluronidase. Uh, they uh, spray, uh, promote the spread of the venom through tissue by increasing the permeability but also may cause tissue damage. There are some proteolytic enzymes and polypeptide toxins. These increase the vascular permeability. The neurotoxin or venom peptide toxin, they release acetylcholine at the nerve ending at neuromuscular junction and then damage the ending, prevents further release of transmission. So. Uh, this uh, here comes a question that uh, if a young or juvenile uh, snake bites and at the same time if a old uh, snake bites will 
both of them uh, have the same impact or not. There is usually variation in venom comp uh, composition within species. The two most important factors are envenoming by juvenile and arrhythmic may cause qualitatively different clinical effects. And envenoming by a snake in one part of its geographical range may not be neutralized by an antivenom raised using venom from other part of the range. So uh, this is a very important question of wh what is a venomous snake bite? A bite is uh, by a venomous uh, snake which produces specific symptoms and signs or a syndrome which will be discussed later is considered as a venomous snake bite. It is important to note that a bite by venomous snakes may not always produce features of envenomation. About 50% bites of the Russell's viper, 30% of the cobras, and 5 to 10% of the saw-scale vipers do not result in any symptoms or signs of envenoming. So, here comes the uh, important part, pathophysiology of human envenoming. There are some local envenoming causes swelling and bruising, results from increased vascular permeability attributable to venom endopeptides, metalloproteinase, hemorrhagins. Membrane damaging polypeptide toxin, phospholipases, and endogenous autoquoids released by the venom, such as histamine and kinins. Local tissue necrosis results from direct action of the myotoxins and cytotoxins and ischemia caused by thrombosis, compression of the blood vessels by first aid methods, such as tight tourniquets, or by swollen muscle within. Uh, uh, tight facet, uh, fascial compartment. Myotoxin damages the muscle cell plasma membrane directly. Most are either enzymatically active or enzymatically inactive. Uh, there is hypotension and shock after viper bites, leakage of plasma or blood into the beaten limb and elsewhere or massive gastrointestinal hemorrhage may cause hypovolemia, vasodilation, especially of splanchnic vessels and a uh, direct effect on the myocardium may contribute to hypertension. Bleeding and blood clotting disturbances. Snake venoms affect hemostasis in several ways. Pro-coagulant enzymes activate the intravascular coagulation producing consumption coagulopathy and incoagulable blood. Pro-coagulants of colubridy and elapidy activate prothrombin, whereas those in venoms of vipers activate factor 5 and factor 10. Thrombin-like enzymes in feed viper venoms have a direct action on fibrinogen. Some venom causes, causes defibrinogenation by activating the endogenous fibrinolytic system. Anticoagulant activity is attributable to venom phospholipases, platelet activation or inhibition results in thrombocytopenia. Complement activation, LAPD and some uh, colubridy venoms acti activates the complement via the alternate pathway. Cobra venom factor is the snake C3B, whereas some uh, viper, viper venoms activate the classic factor. Complement activation affects the platelets, the blood coagulation system, and other humoral mediators. Uh, there are some uh, neurotoxicity, neurotoxic polypeptides of snake venoms cause paralysis by blocking the transmission at the neuromuscular junction. Patients with paralysis of the bulbar muscles may die of upper airway obstruction or aspiration. But the most common mode of death after neurotoxic envenoming is respiratory paralysis. There, there may be myotoxicity, metalloproteinase enzymes are principally responsible. They are present in venoms of uh, sea snakes, uh, some elapids, and some uh, species of snakes and vipers, releasing to the blood streams of myoglobins, muscle enzymes, uric acid, potassium, and other muscle constituents in an effects in human presynaptic neurotoxins. Patient might die of bulbar and respiratory muscle weakness, acute hyperkalemia, or acute kidney injury. There may be uh, acute kidney injury due to snake bite. A wide range of renal histological changes has been described after snake bites. Acute tubular necrosis is the most common, but proliferative glomerular necritis in this Tissue nephritis, toxic mesangiolysis with platelet agglutination, fibrin deposition, ischemic changes, and distal tubular damage also happens. Generalized increase in capillary permeability. Venoms of vipers can cause a generalized increase in vascular permeability, resulting in pulmonary edema, serous effusion, conjunctival periorbital facial, and retinal edema, bilateral parotid enlargement, albuminuria, and hemoconcentration. 
this may uh, this causes due to mainly metalloproteases that damages the vascular endothelium and uh, in uh, in summation we can uh, see the whole uh, chart uh, that was taken from um, davidson the local effects pain sweating erythema blistering necrosis swelling non specific systemic effects these systemic effects non specific and specific will be discussed later so clinical features of snake bite or how a patient would come to us or what would be the examination findings there would be local limb benumbing local swelling involving more than half of the bitten limb within 48 hours of the bite swelling after bites on the digits toes and especially fingers rapid extension of the swelling for example beyond the wrist or ankle within a few hours of the bite on, on the hands or the feet there are some uh, pictures showing local envenoming like uh, local swelling uh, there is local swelling gangrene or uh, yesterday uh, we uh, released a patient that was almost uh, resembles this of uh, green pig viper poisoning systemic features there would be some non specific symptoms like patient would come with the patient would come with uh, headache nausea vomiting or abdominal pain there would be some neurological features like uh, the patient with the calm with, uh, with muscle paralysis difficulty in moving jaw tongue eye difficulty in vision heaviness of the eyelid weakness of neck muscle difficulty in swallowing dribbling of saliva nasal voice difficulty in respiration and in examination we would find ptosis diplopia ophthalmoplegia loss of gag reflex dystonia bilateral facial paralysis there would be broken neck sign there would be weak grip and diminished tendon reflexes here are some pictures this is a picture of uh, ptosis you see and this is a picture of broken neck sign there would be some hematological symptoms there be spontaneous bleeding from gum vomiting of blood or urethral bleeding persistent bleeding from bite site any puncture site or inflicted wound if any and the sign would be there would be bruise with fine bruise hematuria epistaxis or hemorrhagic blisters this is a picture of hemorrhagic blisters uh, these are uh, gum bleeding or uh, periorbital bleeding these are the hematological signs there are the signs of renal impairment scanty or no urine output dark colored urine this is a dark very dark colored urine hypotension and this is also a uh, red colored urine signs of myotoxicity there would be muscle tenderness black urine or respiratory failure some clinical uremic syndrome nausea vomiting hiccup flapping tremor drowsiness muscle twitching pericardial friction rub there would be cardiovascular toxicity like hypotension and shock very important uh, feature is psychological features snake bite is also known to cause significant psychological morbidity in form of acute stress reaction and anxiety immediately and depression and post traumatic stress disorder as a sequel clinical syndrome what are the clinical symptoms patient may present with clusters of symptoms and signs in many cases identification of the offending snake is not possible based on the circumstances and chronology of the appearance and group of symptoms and signs there would be a group of signs and symptoms uh, and on the basis of those we can we may identify the snakes if patient cannot uh, describe the snakes or we uh, have very little information about the snakes there there are five syndromes syndrome one there will be local in venoming uh, like swelling with bleeding or clotting disturbances this may be most probably these are all uh, vipers syndrome 2 local in venoming swelling with bleeding clotting disturbances and with shock or acute kidney injury with or without neurotoxicity there may be possibility of russell's viper if their local envenoming with neurotoxicity there may be cobra or king cobra if there is neurotoxicity with minimal or no local envenoming bitten on land there uh, if there is neurotoxicity with uh, almost no local envenoming there are two possibilities if this is on the land or while stepping on the ground this may be crake or in the, while in the sea this may be cyst 
neurotoxicity with dark brown urine and acute kidney injury. Same if the if uh, patient is injured in the land or while sleeping indoors, this may be great. In the sea, uh, this may be sea snake. So now management of the snake bites, these are divided into two parts, free hospital management or which we may say the first aid. Effective first aid treatment should be carried out immediately or very soon after the snake bite before the patient reaches the hospital. It can be performed by the snake bite victim or by anyone present who has skills to provide first aid. Very important thing is incorrect first aid may cause more harm than good. What are the aims of the first aid? Attempt to slow down the spread of the venom. Prevent mortality and complications, control dangerous early symptoms of envenoming, and not to harm the snake bite victim. So, what would be the recommended first aid uh, methods? There would be reassurance, patient should be advised not to get panicked. There must be immobilization. If the bite is in the lower limb, sit down, do not work. If the bite is in the upper limb, do not move the limb. Wash the beaten uh, area with uh, soap or water. Remove as early as possible all the rings, bangles, anklets, cords, clothing, cabbage, taga, etc., which may cause constriction of the uh, uh, if swelling occurs. There must be quick transportation. Place patient in lateral recumbent position if non breathing, insert an oral airway or perform rescue breathing if necessary. If the snake is killed somehow, Bring it to the hospital. Be careful and do not handle snakes barehandedly as they may pretend to be dead. Do not waste time for catching or killing the snake. There would be some uh, restrictions or uh, in the guideline they say some don'ts during first aid. Do not apply tourniquets like a check in the bitten limb. Do not cut or prick, the, uh, prick with needles or any topical cream. Do not waste time unnecessarily seeking treatment provided by traditional healers or ojas. Do not provide anything by mouth if the victim has difficulty in swallowing, vomiting, nasal voice, uh, excessive salivation. Do not cauterize or uh, it is imperative not to apply any herbal medicine, stones, seeds, saliva, potassium permanganate solution or card powder and mud. Uh, it is prohibited to use herbal products like oil, ghee, pepper to induce vomiting. Do not apply alcohol or aspirin to relieve pain. Do not panic or delay in reaching a uh, health facility. And after the patient have reached hospital somehow, there will be hospital management and there is a very good guideline here. Sorry. Patient with history of snake bite, there is a very nice algorithm, government, uh, this is NCDC guideline. Patient with a history of snake bite, when the snake bite is suspected, admission in the hospital. So the very first thing we have to do is reassurance and assessment of the patient. Check the vital signs and level of the consciousness, fluid status, urine output. Resuscitation if necessary if the patient is in uh, dehydration or the patient has uh, poor fluid status or patient uh, uh, has a very low level of consciousness, access for uh, features of envenomation, identification of the snake. These are the two parts. If the snake is identified as non, uh, non-venomous, there will be real assurance, observation, supportive care, and discharge. If the snake is identified as venom- venomous, and snake is not identified on a suspected snake bite, if uh, there would be some uh, criteria, if the snake is identified as venomous but no features of uh, systemic or local envenomation, same treatment like reassurance, observation, supportive care, and discharge. If features of local envenoming found, we have to look for if that is due to cobra or Russell viper, then we have uh, local local envenoming, we have to do reassurance, observation, uh, same treatment. If the Systemic envenoming or due to uh, suspected cobra and Russell viper, there would be anti- uh, st- uh, starting of antivenom. We have to do very rapid uh, investigations. The most important investigation or practical we do, do in our world is 20 uh, minute whole blood clotting time, then some snake bite pre- screening test, uh, complete blood count, urine routine microscopic examination, urea, electrolytes, creatinine. ECG, uh, bleeding time, clotting time, APTT. 
And uh, un unluckily, we a specific test for detection of venom is not available in our country. And uh, now we have to start for the anti-venom therapy. The common anti-venom therapy immediately if indicated for the bites of cobra, prey, or uh, Russell's viper. And uh, currently available antivenoms not recommended for the uh, bites of green pit viper or sea snakes. What are the indications? Uh, these, there may be some uh, systemic envenoming like hemostatic abnormalities, spontaneous systemic bleeding, coagulopathy, uh, 20 minute whole blood clotting time or other laboratory tests such as prothrombin time or thrombocytopenia less than uh, 1 lakh per cubic millimeter thrombocyte count. There may be some neurotoxic signs like ptosis, external ophthalmoplasia, paralysis, cardiovascular sign like hypotension shock, cardiac arrhythmia, abnormal ECG. Acute kidney injury like uh, oliguria and anuria, raised blood creatinine. There may be some hemoglobin or myoglobin urea like dark brown urine, which I've discussed earlier, other evidence of intravascular hemolysis. There may be some local envenoming, which are indicated for antivenom, like local swelling involving more than half of the bitten limb within 48 hours of the bite, swelling after bites on the digits. Rapid extension of the swelling, development of an enlarged tender lymph node draining the bitten limb. Uh, very important, what are the doses, antivenom doses and uh, its strength? Doses is 100 ml or uh, each ampoule of antivenom uh, contains uh, 10 ml. So we need 10 ampoules of uh, polyvalent anti antivenom mixed with 100 ml of normal saline, uh, which are uh, indicated in the guideline, should be infused intravenously over one hour. Uh, most important part is adults and children should receive the same dose of antivenom. Here they say start infusion at lower rate for 10 to 15 minutes, but in uh, practical or work management, we uh, look for uh, uh, usually five minutes or mostly within 10 minutes. Before uh, initiating the antivenom, prophylactic subcutaneous adrenaline or intramuscular adrenaline should be given to the victim. There, we have to be cautious. Like uh, we have to be, uh, we, uh, there must be available uh, injection hydrocortisone and injection antihistamine at bedside. Just uh, if we start the antivenom doses, there may be some hypersensitive reaction. Observe the patient carefully during the time of administration of antivenom, up to three hours of signs of anaphylaxis. And we have to do the regular monitoring, like vital signs, pulse, blood pressure, respiration, and observe the appearance of rash. There are criteria for repeating the initial dose of antivenom. Persisting or deteriorating sign of systemic envenoming, like if no improvement or deterioration of neurotoxic features due to cobra or prey, one to two hours after completion of antivenom, if there are persistence or recurrence of blood in coagulability after six hours of antivenom treatment. The endpoint of antivenom therapy is reversal of coagulopathy as determined by serial performance of 20 whole blood clotting time. There are some uh, most, uh, important points in Viper Bites monitor the efficacy of antivenom by repeatedly performing 20 minutes whole blood clotting time. Initially, at the, uh, at the start of the antivenom therapy, repeat in 6 hours if the blood does not clot in 20 minutes, repeat the antivenom infusion and perform 20 minutes whole blood clotting time 6 hours later. There may be some anti-venom reaction, which is very important and practical in words. There is a very um, important or algorithm here. There may be some early reaction. Uh, there may be some late reaction. Early reactions are usually anaphylactic reactions. Like uh, there may be patient may present with dry cough, palpitation, vomiting, uh, sweating, abdominal pain, or urticaria. Uh, there may be some uh, pyrogenic reactions, which usually develop after two, one to two hours. There may be fever uh, or um, fall of uh, blood pressure. If some anaphylactic reaction occurs, we have to stop the antivenom immediately. Injection, uh, we have to use injection adrenaline, chlorpheniramine, maliate, <coughs> and injection hydrocortisone. If the bronchospasm, if we found bronchospasm, have to nebulize the patient with salbutamol. 
The dose can be repeated every 5 to 10 minutes if the reaction persists. Or if the anaphylaxis is unresponsive to injection adrenaline, we have to use uh, IV IV adrenaline with uh, mixed with normal saline. Or if the uh, yeah, pyrogenic reactions, uh, in case of pyrogenic reactions, we have to stop the antivenom and uh, use antipyretic like paracetamol suppository. Uh, the late reaction, usually serum sickness, we usually offer after 1 to 12 days. There may be fever, nausea, vomiting, arthralgia, lymphadenopathy, recurrent urticaria, encephalopathy. And uh, we have to use oral prednisolones, chlorpheniramine. And when the injection, uh, and there is a very important point in the guideline here, the, when the injection adrenaline should not be given if the patient has hypertension, if the patient has any cardiac disease or history of any cerebrovascular disease or coagulopathy. In management of uh, snake bites, there may be um, arisal of some special problems like respiratory failure. We have to uh, clear the airway, oxygen supply, perform a chin lift and jaw thrust maneuver, insert a oropharyngeal airway, ventilate the patient with a um, uh, ambu bag, and uh, establish uh, endotracheal intubation and quickly transfer the patient uh, near, uh, to the nearest health facility having antivenom and ICU. Patient should be given injection neostagmine methyl sulfate and injection atropine four hourly. Atropine to be given before neostagmine. Uh, there may be some acute in kidney injury during the uh, management of snake bite. Yeah, in these cases, we have to uh, use the early, uh, use as early as possible the antivenom, direct hypovolemia with intravenous fluid, ensure adequate urine output, continuous in intravenous fluid, intravenous trisomite if needed. Uh, we have to correct the metabolic acidosis. If the acute kidney injury occurs, there will be metabolic acidosis with a slow intravenous infusion of 50 to 100 millimole of sodium bicarbonate. Check and repeat the ABG. If rhabdomyolysis occurs, 200 milliliter of 20% malleol may be infused intravenously over 20 minutes, but this may must not be repeated as there is a danger of inducing dangerous fluid and electrolyte imbalance and patient need immediate or urgent dialysis. And in case of hematological abnormality, strict bed rest to avoid the minor tra trauma, transfusion of clotting factors, intramuscular injections should be avoided, detect coagulopathy in viper bites by same by performing 20 hour whole blood clotting time two hourly, and coagulation profile should be tested six hourly. Like uh, bleeding time, clot, clotting time, APTT. And very important thing is we have to do a regular follow-up, detection of anti-venom reaction, early reaction within three hours, serum sickness weekly, once or for three weeks, detection of any late sequel conoic envenomation, physical disability or psychiatric disability. We have to check for any uh, physical disability like immobilization of the limbs or respiratory distress or any psychiatric disability like patient may develop anxiety or in later phases patient may develop depression three and six months after the bite we have to do a regular follow-up so there is a very important message here worldwide someone dies from a snake bite every four minutes so we have to be very efficient and very uh, cautious about the snake bite management and there must be some uh, rules and etiquette, etiquettes as I was saying. Snakes usually do not bite intentionally. They only bite whenever we attack them or whenever they feel threatened. So we can easily avoid the snake bite if uh, it is good to avoid keeping food items like paddy, poultry and pigeon within bedroom, which might attract rats, which in turn attract the snakes to in turn using long shoe during trekking or uh, walking near the long grasses. Check out presence of snakes while uh, handling the fishing nets. Take uh, special precautions like flashlight stick, uh, stick during walk at night because snakes usually move actively at night. Know about the venomous snakes and their habitat in Bangladesh. Take special precautions during sleep using um, pot or avoid sleeping in the floor. Uh, 
um, clean the four sides of the house, keep distance between the dwelling house and cultivation land, keep the yard free of clutter. So here is a very, uh, I have found this message in uh, from a, a snake conservation campaign I have looked uh, searching the internet and the only difference between beautiful and scary is now a snake is very beautiful creature and look how beautiful this is but this is also scary if we lack of knowledge and that's the end of the presentation thank you for staying with me thank you, uh, thank you my respected teachers and my dear colleagues